In this episode, let's have a quick look at how to do a very simple cross-process look in DaVinci Resolve. All right, in this case, we are looking at just a piece of footage here. I have a color chart and <laughs> This is, uh, we're not gonna get too crazy with this, but I just wanna do a little bit of a stylistic look at things. In terms of the overall look right now, I think we're, we're doing okay. Um, I think our, our color balance is pretty decent. A um, little bit of red in the face, but not, not anything that's too out of whack. So let's do a couple of things. First step, and we'll do this in separate nodes here. The first step is I'm going to adjust my contrast. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and bump this up. And you'll see here, we'll go to about 1.2. 1. 1. And then from there, I can also change my pivot. Now, one thing to notice about this pivot, if you don't understand what that is, and this, this took me a while to figure this out, but what the pivot does is it chooses um, the point from which the contrast is stretched. And actually, let's go back and look at the contrast again. If I pull this back down close to one. Now watch what happens when I crank this up over here on the waveform. And uh, as I increase that, you can see it sort of stretches it. You see that? And of course the image itself gets really stretched too in terms of, con or uh, yeah, stretched I guess really in terms of contrast. So we're gonna, we're gonna go somewhere around 1.2. We're working with DSLR footage, so this is not you can't go too far or it's going to start to look really, really weird. And then the pivot point chooses the, the point from which everything is stretched. Now, that's hard to kind of conceptualize just in your brain, but if you start to play with it, you'll see what I mean here. Now, watch again the waveforms as I go down on the pivot. It's stretching everything from the bottom up. And then if I take the pivot up, it's going and stretching everything from the top towards the bottom. So you can kind of tweak that to get the look that you want. And I think in our case, we're going to want to go somewhere around. Let's go somewhere around there. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and add another node. That's our contrast adjustment. Now we're going to do our cross-processing. And the, the kind of the cross-process look, in this case, we're going to go, we're going to keep it pretty simple and pretty subtle. I usually do interviews and um, in terms of my video work and... I don't usually have a license to go too extreme, um, so we're gonna keep it pretty subtle here. You can, of course, if it suits your needs, go farther than we're gonna go here, but the main idea is you wanna push some blue into the shadows, or to the, sorry, use a lift to push some blue in, and then use your gain to compensate just a little bit towards yellow, so you get that kind of cross-process look. So let me just kind of, first of all, start with some blue here. Okay, good, and then we're gonna come over here to gain, and just, we don't wanna to go too far. Again, we wanna keep this pretty subtle. We could go harder here if we wanted to on the blues. Let's keep it about there. Okay, not bad. So if we just play this back, we may have pushed too much blue into the shadows there, I'm not sure. Then I got a cheesy grin here and the teeth are looking a little bit yellowish because we did some compensation there. So what we might do is add another node. Let's add another serial node. And we're gonna come over here to our curves. And I'm gonna need to move this out of the way. On our curves, we're gonna come to our hue versus saturation. And then I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here. Just sample from right there on my teeth. And then what I can do is now I've chosen this color range and I can just desaturate that. That's how you usually whiten teeth in a fairly subtle way. So here is after, here's before. So you can see we took some of that yellow out. And again, that's because we were pushing some yellow into the, to the highlights there. So there's our, uh, I guess, our kind of very basic cross-process look. You could, again, you could push it as hard as you want, um, but I'm going to keep it fairly subtle. Let's kind of push this a little bit more this time. So again, we'll come down here. We're going to push our contrast here. We have a little bit of a corporate project that I was working on. It's supposed to be kind of a comedy. So we're going to push that contrast up. We're going to pull the pivot down a little bit. Now, because, of course, this is a, a comedy, we've got Santa in here. We probably don't want to go dark. If we wanted to go dark in terms of contrast, we could push it that way, but 
I'm going to keep it pretty light and bright. And we might even push that contrast a little bit more. Now, as I watch my parade scope over here again, I'm going to be a little bit careful. I don't want to totally crush those uh, or clip those reds. So we'll pull that back a little bit here. Now we can start pushing the colors. So blue works pretty well for this because, again, we're going for, you know, Santa Claus, winter, cold. Um, so that works nicely. But we do want to kind of push a little bit of warmth back into the skin tones. And you know, there are different there are different directions you go with it. If you wanted a kind of a warmer, you could go that direction. If you wanted to go cooler, you might push more blue into the with a lift. But I'm gonna we're gonna take it somewhere around in that area. Now, one thing we've, we're finding here is that this red channel is getting really really saturated. Now, obviously, if we were working with broadcast. We've got to watch the saturation in terms of broadcast safe levels. So we could always, of course, come back in here and just pull the red back down to control it a little bit. And of course, you're going to have to do that per the, the requirements for wherever you're going to be broadcasting. But there's another quick, a little bit more extreme example of cross-processing. And that's really all there is to it. Now, if I've said something wrong or if there are other better ways to do this, we're certainly happy to, to know what those are. So if you know more about color grading than I do, again, I'm, I'm really just getting started on this. Um, please let us know. Share some uh, information in the comments. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk with you soon.